Hello everyone. It's an exciting moment for our NCSI team as today marks the beginning of journey of NCSI Reels through realms of expertise. Here we try to bridge the gap between the theory and practicals uh, in neurocritical care. Uh, so please feel free to share your ideas, your thoughts, your videos if you have any. We would welcome that as together we can make it really dynamic. Our first NCSI reel begins with Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. He is a senior consultant and head neuroanesthesia and neurocritical care Astro Whitefield Hospital, Bangalore, with whom we explore the invaluable role of somatosensory work potentials in neurocritical care. Happy watching. Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. I am a senior consultant and chief of neuroanesthesia and neurointensive care in Astro Whitefield Hospital, Bangalore. And today I would like to talk about uh, the utility of somatosensory evoke potentials in neuro ICU. So in simple terms we call it SSCP. So we all know that SSCP is being regularly used during spine surgeries and also during central sulcus mapping in uh, brain surgeries. But how to use SSCP in neuro ICU is what I am going to uh, you know, teach you today. And not only that we are also going to show you live how to connect SSCP in ICU and get the waveforms. So we are going to uh, deal with both areas. So first let me start the presentation with uh, which areas SSCP can be useful in the neuro ICU. Number one is prognostication following cardiac arrest. Okay? If in hospital cardiac arrest happens then we put the patients on hypothermia rates. How is this going to help there? And monitoring in GB syndrome patients, assessment of brain death and prognosticating traumatic brain injury and uh, functional outcomes in stroke, monitoring hypoxic ischemic brain damage and evaluating the functional recovery and rehabilitation and also certain research purposes. So then uh, there are several uh, utilities of SSCP and it is very safe to do SSCP because in ICU not like MEP because very less current is what we are going to give to the patient and uh, so now I would like to show you how we actually do that in ICU and again I will come back and explain you in detail about all these conditions how to use So now. Uh, Uda, she is a neurophysiologist. She will show us how to actually connect uh, SSCP to patient in ICU. Welcome, Uda. Yes. Hello, everyone. So today I will be showing you how to connect SSCP uh, in ICU situation. So one so, question I would like to ask you. Okay. So connecting in OT and ICU, mm -hmm. what do you do? You feel any difference in yes. connecting or getting the waveforms? Yes, yes, yes. So some of the differences that I have encountered is that uh, there will be more artifacts when compared to the OT because patient uh, would be a little more awake. So uh, we, we actually encounter two types of artifacts that is physiological as well as non-physiological. So physiological artifacts is purely nothing but that comes from the respiration, from the movement or maybe due to like glossokinetic artifacts, all of those we could encounter. Non-physiological will be purely from the nearby machines uh, that could actually interfere with the uh, signal that is being averaged. Yes. Okay, got it. So basically for connecting SSCP, yes. where do you put the electrodes on the body? Okay, so for connecting SSCP, where are we uh, using the stimulating electrodes, you can use two types of electrodes. You can use needle or you can use patch electrodes. So the type that I am going to be using here is patch electrodes, but the only problem that we encounter when using patch electrodes is, is that uh, the impedance uh, is, a, is slightly more higher when using patch. So patch electrode will be, the stimulating patch electrodes will be connected uh, between the tendon of uh, palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis and for the uh, recording one we will be connecting on the primary sensory cortex uh, area 312. Yes. Okay, so then uh, we will show that live on the patient. Okay. okay. So these are the patch electrodes that we are using. This will have an active, a reference and a ground. So the active and the reference will be uh, connected between these two tendons that I had talked about, which will be the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi uh, radialis tendon. Uh, and for the stimulating, we will be connecting to the contralateral side of uh, primary cortex. Okay. The recording electrodes will be connected on the contralateral uh, primary sensory cortex area 312 and uh, based on the international EEG placement system, we will be placing it on the uh, contralateral side uh, C3 dash, so which will be 2 centimeters, uh, two centimeters uh, posterior to the actual C3 placement. So I'll be cleaning first with using an alcohol swab so that uh, we don't encounter any impedance uh, interference because ideally the impedance should be less than 5 kilo ohm. Followed by that I'll be placing the electrodes. Uh, so the active I'm just uh, palpating for the tendon and then followed by which I'll be placing the active on the 
tendon followed by uh, the reference which you should place ideally between 2 to 3 cm difference and the ground can be placed a little more further between the stimulation and the recording so i'll be placing it here yes okay so now when it comes to the recording ideally you're supposed to be uh, you're supposed to be placing based on the uh, 1020 eg inter uh, international system so uh, it is nothing but we have to take the distance from nasion to inian as well as from the left pre preauricular point to the right preauricular point and exactly the mid of that would be considered as your cz so it, it is supposed to be done using a measuring tape but over the years with experience it can be done uh, roughly as well approximated so now when the approximated uh, cz would be considered this and your c3 dash would come somewhere mid of these both so this is your c3 and for sscp recording it should be placed two centimeters posteriorly to that so i'll be placing it over here So the active will be placed exactly on C3 dash, it should come around here. The reference should be placed on CZ dash, which your CZ would be here. Okay, so I'm just going to place it a little posteriorly around here. And you can place your ground somewhere between that. So here I'm just going to place it on the forehead, somewhere around FZ. So this is your this is your active active, active one, yes, right? Yes, this is the recording. Yeah. And this will be the ground. So what is the uh, machine that you're using with the? Okay, so the machine that we're using here is Capital IOMAX system, and uh, just to give you a rough uh, idea of how the machine works, is nothing but it has two modules. It has a cortical module and a limb module. So, uh, and these both modules are connected by using a uh, cable. And as you can see, this is your receiving area and this is your stimulating area. This ha same thing is followed in this box as well. Your receiving area and this is your stimulating area. So, for SSCP, I've connected the stimulating electrodes over here, followed by the recording is connected over here. So, how much current are you using now? So I'm using around 50 milliamp as you can see and uh, uh, ideally it can go up till 20 milliamp for the upper limb and th So 15 milliamperes uh, is what we are using Yes for the median uh, upper limb so when it comes to lower limb we should ideally use something around less than 30 milliamp Okay got it and So uh, now how many Averaging are you using here? Okay, so the average count as you can see is 200. So why averaging is being done for this signal is because clearly to remove the noise that is happening in the uh, uh, signal. So as it averages, you can see that the noise will keep on cancelling out unless you get a clear waveform. Rudha, can you just explain what we are seeing on the screen? Okay, so as you can see, this is the baseline followed by the latest average. So, uh, an average is kept on taking uh, uh, every 10 minutes, okay. So, this refers to the amplitude that you can see here and this 21 is nothing but the latency. Latency referring to the time taken for the stimulation to be received by the brain. So, how we use this, uh, if we get a very good uh, baseline for a patient, we will assume that they will have a, a good prognosis. If you don't get a good SSCP baseline in the neuro ICU, then uh, we are seeing that uh, uh, the prognosis and the recovery is getting delayed in those particular patients. Yes, sir. And in the next part of the video, I will just explain in, in uh, what conditions actually we are using in detail. So let's start the last half of the presentation where uh, I'll show you specific conditions with examples where you can use SSCP. Number one would be, uh, I'll explain with case examples, for example, a 56 year old male who suffered a cardiac arrest in hospital, then uh, you can actually prognosticate the recovery by using SSCP. So N20 cortical response is what we see there. If you get that response, then the probability of him recovering is very high. If you don't have the response, then you know, you uh, the prob probability of recovery would be lesser. So that is how you can help in prognosticating cardiac arrest patients. 
and but therapeutic hypothermia if you are doing then during the hypothermia time you cannot do any electrophysiological monitoring so this is one important aspect that you need to, you need to understand so maybe you have to do after you come out of therapeutic hypothermia and there is a reference for that and the gb syndrome a very interesting thing so we all know that gb syndrome is a situ situation where antibodies are produced against your body's nervous system peripheral nervous system and then motor and sensory both are affected here so you can actually uh, use sscp in understanding the recovery of the patient so for example a 34 year old female is diagnosed with gb syndrome and then there is an element of motor and sensory uh, the, you know, uh, disease in the particular patient, then you take a baseline uh, SSCP in that particular patient and then you can actually help, uh, you know, understanding how the disease is progressing, whether it is going to increase or you, you can even assess the recovery of the patient based on the uh, improvement in the amplitude and uh, latency of the SSCP and this is the reference for that. So this is, uh, all these things actually uh, many centers are not doing, these are all very uh, novel and futuristic aspects and brain death and in brain death uh, uh, you know criteria one of the ancillary tests is uh, SSCP so here uh, N20 waveform is what they see the exactly it needs to be done uh, as we have shown in this particular video and then you do it and if you have then uh, brain death is not there if it is not there then you can actually confirm the brain death because you know brain stem is dead that's where the signals are not going through the dorsal column to your somatosensory area and uh, even in prognosis of severe traumatic brain injury you can use i have actually you know done a few cases where when the patient gcs was low actually i was doing mep and sscp and then when the patient was actually recovering i observed improvement in the wave morphology and amplitude during the recovery process so these uh, in this uh, cases I, I wouldn't show here because i don't have a permission and uh, so what I am doing is in the conference which is going to come up NCSI in this uh, August end I am going to present this particular topic there you can meet me there and you can discuss with me if you want to know more about how to do electrophysiological testing in the neuro ICU and then it is uh, even stroke you can use SSCP so for a motor prognostication MEP is better but the problem with MEP is that you know the the currents that you give can precipitate a seizure in a patient or it might be painful for the patient so sscp is a more simpler way of understanding the uh, nervous system so but stroke if you ask me what is the best mep is the best magnetic mep if you have that is the best if you don't have you can use electrical mep in a lesser currents even this particular thing i have done few cases i will show you in the conference which is going to come up but sscp also can be used to uh, prognosticate the recovery in stroke and hypoxic ischemic damage also SSCP can be used and uh, a 50 year male for example is unresponsive and he has been resuscitated and you feel that patient had a lot of hypoxia then in that patient you do SSCP if you get a very good SSCP baseline chances of him recovering would be more than a person who is not having the SSCP and then it is uh, uh, you know any neurological deterioration also can be found out in ICU patients and a lot of research applications would come in future and a lot of studies would come up with electrophysiological monitoring in neuro ICU in future. So that is about uh, you know, uh, this presentation of the role of SSCP in uh, neuro intensive care and uh, I hope you will join our conference which is coming up in August end and the link of that I will put in the description of this particular video where I will be there for 2-3 days you can come and meet me and discuss we can discuss how to do all these types of monitoring in neuro intensive care so thank you all thank you very much for following the video till now and hope this video adds a lot of value to your practice and changes your practice thank you thank you Dr. Dheeraj uh, for an informative and comprehensive reel uh, if anyone has any query or doubts, uh, you can put it in the comment box at your convenience. We would love to resolve that. Uh, thank you all for your valuable time. Stay tuned in to NCSI channel for more neurocritical care insights.